Hey students, got a uh, great question here in the beginning chapter, and as we get the semester started, it's chapter one, number 32, and uh, believe it or not, it's a unit conversion problem. may not look like it on the, on the surface. In fact, let me just do kind of a quick analogy, if you remember from the lecture or from the, uh, the video I sent you on how to uh, convert uh, units. Uh, let's just say I had something, and let's make it a little bit on the hard side. Why don't we go like, you know, a thousand inches for a moment. And when I say hard, I just mean because the numbers are going to be a little bit uh, non-decimal because I won't do the metric system. I'll do the English system here. But, you know, maybe I might ask how many yards is this? And the technique I was trying to show you here is you would start with a given number, a thousand inches, and you want to make sure that you don't change that length. Of course, what you end up changing is the number in the unit, but you still want it to be equal to, you know, a uh, thousand inches. And of course, if you multiply it by the number one, you don't change anything. And so the trick is to find something that is equal to one, but yet would get rid of inches and get you towards the direction of yards. And what I mean by that is if you have something in the numerator equal to something in the denominator, if those two are equal, then that quotient is equal to one and you don't really change anything. And so the technique is to do something like this. You say, I want to get rid of inches. So whatever you do, put inches in the bottom. And whatever you want to change it to, put that in the top. Now, ultimately, I want to go to yards. And I do know that there are 36 inches in one yard. So I could do this in one step. But to, to make it kind of follow the pattern of question 32, let me just say I know the relationship between inches and something else, which is feet. But the big thing in that first step is to get rid of inches. And then, of course, I got to make sure the bottom and the top are the same. So one foot and 12 inches are the same. So this multiplication right here would cancel off inches and leave me with feet but I have not changed the overall number. The overall length is still a thousand inches. It's now just listed in feet. And the same logic would be applied if I did it a second time. And then this time I'd say, hey, let's get rid of feet. So I want to put feet down here and I can get that too. And then I'll put yards. And so this multiplication would get rid of feet and give me yards. Okay. And that's Kind of my thinking process. And that's ultimately what I want. But again, like I said, this quotient here has to be equal to number one. Or I guess I should say the whole factor that is gotten from this quotient is equal to the number one. And so what I do know is that there are three feet in one yard. So again, see how the numerator and the denominator are the, are the same. And so, again, this first multiplication changes inches to feet. The second one changes uh, feet to yards, and that's a kind of a two-step process. Uh, now, I realize I'm kind of off the path of number 32, but I wanted to kind of just illustrate how it's really just, you know, uh, keeping the, everything the same, just changing what it's listed as. And instead of inches, we could change it to yards. So to finish this little intro problem, let me just go 1,000, and over here I'd go times 1, which I don't need to do anything for. I'll just go divide 12. And then over here, times another 1, which I guess I didn't really need to do that, but then divide by 3 and hit Enter. So this would come out to be 27, and then I'll round it to 8, and then we could have a discussion about significant figures. But let me move on from this pre-setup, and let me actually do number 32. All right, so I'm going to just kind of grab my yellow pad here. I'll put up here for anybody kind of scanning the videos kind of quickly, chapter 1, number 32, and say, well, what are we going to do? And so it says calculate, and there is an approximation, so this is, you know, um, Another piece of it that we're not going to do everything with exact uh, numerical calculations. We'll just round things. But it says calculate the number of atoms. 
So like the problem I just did, I want my final answer to be a number of atoms. And so right here, be number of yards, okay? So we want to know the number of atoms in a bacteria. Now, here it says assume that the average mass of an atom is about 10 times that of the mass of a hydrogen atom. So there's my first conversion. There's my first connection. I'll just write that down. That's sort of like somebody telling me how many uh, inches are in a foot. So in other words, I know that there are 10, and I'll just put H's, so 10 hydrogen atoms in your ordinary average atom. I'll just put one A. So there's my conversion, a 10 to 1 connection instead of a 12 to 1 connection. Okay? Um, there's a hint here. It says the mass of a hydrogen atom is about this much. Okay, that's good. And the mass of a bacterium is about this much. Ah. Now, this is really, really going to help because, again, what I want to know is how many atoms are in a bacterium, okay? Because what they have just given me here is the mass in one bacterium. So let me write that as 10 to the minus 15 kilograms in one bacterium. That's what I have, and I don't want to change that. I don't want to change the mass of that. This goes back to my little part here. I don't want to change a thousand inches. I just want to change it from being listed in kilograms to be listed in number of atoms. So what I want to do is multiply it by a creative number one. And that creative number one will get, hopefully, rid of kilograms and move it into something else. And see, right there was that something else. And I probably should have written it down with this one. They said that one hydrogen atom is equal to about 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Okay, so if I use that given as a unit conversion, converting mass into hydrogen atoms, I could put kilograms down here and then hydrogen atoms up here. And then when I multiply this out, see how kilograms would cancel off and I would now have how many hydrogen atoms per bacterium, which I wouldn't quite be done. But again, let's just make sure the numerator and denominator are the same. So one hydrogen atom, so that's the top, is equal to 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So this is that conversion, just like converting inches into feet. It's a 12 to 1 ratio. This is a 1 to 10 to the minus 27 ratio. So if I got my calculator out and multiplied that, that would tell me how many hydrogen atoms. Now, that's not the ultimate part I want to get. So let me take a second step here and convert it from hydrogen atoms to kind of your average, ordinary, everyday atom. Okay, so again, I want down here hydrogen atoms, and up here I want your ordinary, everyday atom. So again, that's kind of the pattern. This in the numerator will cancel with this in the denominator. But again, this only logically works is if what's in the numerator matches the denominator, so it's equal to, to, to 1. And so that's what this conversion is right here. There are 10 hydrogen atoms making up your average 1 atom. And so again, notice, number 1, numerator and denominator are the same, number 1. Numerator and denominator are equal, and uh, I shouldn't say the same, they're equal, so they're equal to one. So what I've just done is I've taken the known information, which is the mass of one bacteria, multiplied by a number of one, which is the basically changing kilograms into hydrogen atom and hydrogen atom into your average atom, and then we are going to have, when we're all done here, equals how many atoms per bacterium.
because we'll have that A for number of atoms, and we'll have that B for bacteria. So to finish the problem, let me just get out my calculator. Actually, I guess I don't really need a calculator for that. I'll just remind you of a little mathematics. Uh, this is 10 to the minus uh, 15. Uh, if you remember, when you multiply exponents, uh, you add them together, and when you divide, you subtract. So this would then be minus a negative 27. And then I'm dividing by a 10, so that would be a minus a 1. And so let's just see here. The two negatives here make a positive. So the 27 and the negative 15 make a positive 12 minus a 1 make a positive 11. So it would be 10 to the 11 average atoms per bacterium. Nice. And I suppose if we wanted to write that out, we could write that as kind of an interesting unit conversion here because I, again, just kind of separated 10 to the 11th into a 9 and a 2. I like the 9 because 10 to the 9 is a billion, and 10 squared is 100. So in words, this would be a 100 billion atoms per bacterium. All right. Hope that was helpful to someone. Take care.